Today we're going to look at the XMatch function in Microsoft Excel. The XMatch function searches for a criteria or lookup value in a column or a row and then returns the index of that match. And so if we search for James in this column, we're going to expect to find it's three as it is the third row in that data set. So let's go ahead and open this up. So equals X match function. And then we can see that we have several different available arguments. And so these ones over here on the right hand side, surrounded by the brackets are optional. So the only ones that we have to use is the lookup value, which in this case would be James. And then the lookup array, which is going to be this column. And then we can go ahead and close this out. And we can see that it returns three, which is the third row, which is indeed where James is, as you can see that is highlighted over here. So by default, if you do not enter a match mode, X match defaults to exact match, which means it's going to return the exact thing. And so if we add something here, for example, James, uh, or maybe we spell it wrong, it's not going to find that. So it only does an exact match, just like that. So let's go ahead and look at our match modes. So we have exact match, exact or next smaller, exact or next larger. And so these both have to do with numbers. And then the final one, two, is wildcard character match. And so we're going to look at that just for a moment here in our match here. So currently we have three, so it's still returning the same one, but let's look at what we have here. So we can use a asterisk as a wildcard. And so what this is saying is JA followed by anything else. And so you can see it's still returning three. And so let's go ahead and adjust this just so you can see what we're doing here. So we're gonna use our last parameter, which is search mode. And you can see that we have one, which is the default, is search first to last. So it's gonna start at the top and go to the bottom. But the second one, negative one, actually searches last to first. So it's gonna start at the bottom and work its way up. And so now you can see six is returning Jamaica because it also starts with J-A. And so this wildcard allows you to search for those just like that. And then the other one that I want to show you is a question mark. And so a question mark can be used to fill any single character. And so let's say you want to search for James, but you only want to enter the last three characters. You can use two question marks. And what that's going to do is allow the first two characters to be anything. So if we change this to Hames, for example, it's still returning because it's not actually matching James. It's matching M-E-S with two characters in front of it. All right, so that should do it for the wildcard for now. Let's go ahead and rewind and look at our sorted matches here under the match mode. And so we're going to adjust here. Let's search in this number column. And let's do the negative one first. So exact or next smaller. And then we're going to search for 600. And so what we're doing now is we're searching for 600 in our points column. And then we're returning the match is going to be anything equal to or less than 600. And so it's returning five, which is 452. If you look through these, you can see that indeed that 452 is the next one less than 600. So let's just pick this up to 700. And you can see that it does find a match. But if we do 699, it's going to drop back down to that 452. So let's go ahead and switch this around now and go to 1, which is greater than or equals to. And so the 699 still finds 700. We change to 700, still at 700. If we change to 704, then you see it jumps up to that 705. And so that is finding the next value that is exact or larger than the number that we have specified. All right, so let's go ahead and run through some other scenarios here. So in this case, we have a criteria of Paris. And so we're going to revisit our search mode again. So let's look for Paris in our cities, and we're going to do exact match. And then we're going to look at this first and last and last to first again, just for a moment. And so we have a value error here. And what's happening is 
I have these two columns merged. And so it has to look in a single column. And so if we adjust this back to C, then you can see that now it works correctly. And so if you see this, I have two results for Paris in this table. And so currently it's returning four. And so if we look at this match mode or search mode again, you can see that there's first to last or last to first. And so we just had first to last. Now, if we change this to last to first, you can see it returns eight. And so the search mode can be important if you want to find the last or the first result, if there's going to be multiple of the same one. All right. And to wrap this up, let's take a look at a common use case with XMatch is to use it inside of an index function. And so let's say we have a criteria like this, which is our code. And so you can see here is for that polo shirt. And so what we could do is use that X match to search for that code in this column and do exact match. And you can see it returns two. So that is somewhat useful to know that row. But what's more useful, I'm going to cut this formula for the moment. And then I'm going to use an index. So what index does is you select an array and then you select a row and column number and return something specific. So the reason why this is useful is let's just take a look at this one. For example, we're going to grab these items and then for row number, I'm going to paste that formula back in. So let's unmerge it. And so now we have one column for our index. And then our X match is still returning that two for polo shirt. But because our index is in that C column, it's returning polo shirt instead of that code or a row number. And so this is great if you want to do a lookup. So for example, here, now we can do T114 and it updates to t-shirt. We can also update this to our item sold here. And you can see now 1023. If we update this to P134, you can see it returns that one. And then if we drop down, maybe type in this BP345, now it's returning that 2665 for our pants. All right, so that's it for the X match function in Microsoft Excel for today. I hope that helps you to see how you can use XMatch in your own projects. If this was helpful to you, make sure to check out the coefficient add-on so that way you can automatically populate data like this into your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and automatically sync that data. Thanks for watching, have a great day.